Welcome to the Alex Merced Cast, where Alex Merced of alexmerced.com brings you principled, thoughtful, libertarian commentary on issues that matter. Let me tell you guys about the great services over there at Amazon.com. Not only is there Amazon Prime, which gets you two-day free shipping, along with a host of media and music that you can access through your Prime subscription, but you can also subscribe to Audible and get cool audiobooks and get a free audiobook every month, along with Kindle Unlimited. It's like the Netflix for ebook. You can read as many ebooks as you want every month for a monthly subscription. And get a free trial to any of these services by heading over to amazon.alexmerced.com that's amazon.alexmerced.com not only can you get subscriptions or free trials to these products but you can also find recommended product lists such as recommended books and other cool stuff over there at amazon.alexmerced.com Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com and I was just listening to this podcast from the Ezra Klein show um, that got me having to respond and having to say something. And uh, basically the story was this. Uh, she, he had a philosopher on, and basically her argument was um, basically that people spend too much time criticizing government without realizing that government is everywhere, in a sense. And she used a very particular, and this is where definitions are really important, and this is why I'm going to come back to sort of how libertarians break things down. Because she was saying, well, you know, there's the government that's run by the state, but then there's governments, you know, every corporation is a government, every business is a government, every workplace is a government, every household is a government, okay? And because, you know, they're centrally, generally centrally planned economies where people are subject to an authority where there are consequences for the authority. But I think at least as a criticism of libertarianism, this falls apart. Now, if she's just criticizing people who are literally criticizing or feel that their small government position is a grander critique of authority, then yeah, this would be an effective argument. But that's not what libert... At least the traditional sort of American free market libertarianism uh, as represented by the Libertarian Party and, and whatnot. Um, this is not what we're arguing. This is not an anti authority for the sake of all authority is bad it's more of a and that it's more of a pro property rights position in a sense okay so the here's the like sort of the difference so basically as a libertarian i'm not against the idea of governing and governments in the sense that if you consider your boss at work or your you know the the board directors, the government of a corporation, I'm not necessarily against the premise that there is a governing body in different institutions that choose to have a governing body. I don't think there has to be one. People can choose to not have a governing and have more, uh, you know, horizontal uh, structures. But that's their choice. Okay? What libertarians have a problem with is with the violence, so in the sense that a state, so usually what we think of government is really sort of the government that's attached to a state. The state being sort of a territorial monopoly on violence. Meaning, okay, the only, the only people who really have the authority to pull out a gun and shoot someone without consequence is the state. Okay, at the end of the day, if the government wanted to just shoot you, they can just shoot you and there's no consequence. There's no one who polices the state because uh, the state has that authority over violence. So, you know, the deepest of libertarians challenge that a fundamental monopoly, that fundamental sort of um, monopolization of violence. That's not all libertarians, but essentially, you know, if you, if you keep following the logic down the road, that's kind of where you eventually end up at. Um, so it's not that you have consequences when, when you run afoul of authority. So in the sense that if, if my boss decides to fire me, that's not the same as the state killing me or robbing my property. Because in a sense, what they've done is take something that is mine. Okay, this is where we start getting into that sort of 
pro property rights thing to to initiate violence on someone you're violating the property rights and then initiating initiation of violence could come in the form of hurting you physically okay or physically taking your stuff or destroying your stuff okay or violating your body these are all things where someone has exercised violence on someone else okay when a boss fires you they have not taken your stuff they have not hurt your body now you may be in a tough position you may be in a, a situation that is worse than the situation that you is before but the ability for someone to make a decision in society should not be predicated on whether that decision puts you in a worse position okay um, or else everybody would be kind of paralyzed from making decisions because they'd be spending too much time thinking, okay, who am I putting off in a worse position? That's that's different. Okay, saying that someone is worse off is different than saying that someone has had violence acted upon them. Okay. Um, now, well, libertarians want more people to be better off. I want more people to have education. I want more people to have jobs. I want more people to have health care. There's, there's, there's a fundamental difference between saying, oh, okay, well, the government should be involved because of, of an employee because if an employer fires you you may not have certain you may not have the income that your employer provided you that's that is to me a step too far versus saying okay there is a problem when the government confiscates your stuff because you didn't voluntarily give up your wealth or you didn't follow the rules or file the right paperwork that they came in and confiscated your inventory or they separated your family or killed you, sent you to war. These are much, much, much sort of different things because, again, there is something that's yours that's taken. And all other institutions that are not the state where they do not have the authority of violence, they can't just take your stuff. They cannot just hurt you. So all they can do to exercise authority is to withdraw things that are theirs. Okay, in the same way that if you are dating someone, okay, so if I, if I were dating with someone and uh, they were upset with me and they decided to withheld affection from me until I made things right, yes, I'm now worse off, but this does not mean that there, you know, we should try the society, try to, Egal, you know, create an egalitarian system where basically people don't have the authority to withdraw affection that doesn't uh, compute. So, in a sense, that I'm worse off, but nothing was taken that was mine. Okay, uh, my partner's ability to pr provide affection and love and things like that was theirs, and that was theirs alone. Okay, and I only enjoyed it because they were willing to share it with me. And they would only continue to share with me unless the, the transaction is mutual and beneficial. Same thing with work. Now, yes, there are disparities uh, of sort of what people bring to the table that creates power imbalances. So in a sense that, hey, you know, if you have if you are a low skilled laborer who's easily replaceable because you have there's one, the job that you have is a job that many people can do. OK, and two, because of your low skills, there aren't many other jobs you can do. OK. Then the company or the employer is going to have more power in that relationship. It's not because they're inherently more powerful, but it's because you are in a position where you have less leverage. OK, this is sort of the nature of just negotiations between businesses. You know, there's oftentimes one party who may have a little bit more leverage than the other. Okay, and, and, and this is kind of uh, how things play out. There's no way you can just, you know, um, just eliminate these sort of imbalances without exercising violence. And, you know, and that's essentially what a lot of egalitarians say. You know, the, the state should use its power, use its violence to coerce people into behaving ways that theoretically balance out the power. The problem is the people who have to enforce those dictates, who have to uh, enact those dictates at the state are also people who tend to have an imbalance of power and oftentimes end up using those levers to just further those imbalances of power. Okay, so asking for a state solution is oftentimes making the problem worse, making that sort of, in it, those, these power inequalities worse. Because now, not only oftentimes with the re end result Okay, after an, a, an egalitarian effort goes through the, the, the machine of politics, okay, the end result is oftentimes now you have people who didn't just have 
a imbalance of power because of the what they brought to the table, whether it was uh, their capital, uh, their skills, um, etc. Um, what they brought to the table, but now they also have the force of the state that they can use to their will. Because again, people are going to sit there and shape those efforts and play those wills, and the people who already have the imbalance of power are going to already have the imbalance of power to influence it to their ends and increase that imbalance of power. Um, so in that case, you really... The best thing you can hope for is a world where the imbalance of powers are restricted to only the things that are yours, only restricted to your property, your wealth, okay? Because that is something that people can accumulate. I can, so if I'm that low skilled wager, I can attain more skills. It is not easy. It is not hard. It requires sacrifice. And some people are going to be in a better position to do that than others. If you're someone with three kids and a wife um, or a spouse and you know, it's going to be a lot harder for you to sit there and say, hey, I'm going to go retrain for another job. OK, it doesn't mean it's impossible. OK, you may have to work the job and then spend some time training even after work. OK, which may mean less time with your kids, um, which, you know, that there's a cost in that as well. There's cost. Every that's the reality of life, that all decisions come at a cost. And you have to decide sort of those benefits weigh the cost. OK, libertarian world doesn't mean that the choices you make a free world doesn't mean that your choices from a, a, you know, a choice, two good choices that you think are better. And this is kind of where, like, I get the vibe that a lot of egalitarians come from, that, you know, unless both choices result in a place that, uh, you know, you're all right or you're good, then it's, it's you know, if there's a choice where it's, there's only one choice that makes me less bad and another choice that makes me really bad, um, then that's not really a choice, okay? Um, that, so in this case... You know, if people have bad choices, then the government should come in there and say there's no choice at all because we're, we, we theoretically can give you a, a non-choice that's better than the choices that you had. Um, and I just don't buy that. I mean, mainly for the political reality that, you know, um, of just the political process and who influences the political process. Regardless, you could reform money in politics all day, every day. And you're still going to have the same imbalances. You're going to still have the same people influencing it because they always can find a different way to, to have the same effect. They're always going to have something more to influence those who now have power over the resources of others. Okay? And then everything is relative. Okay? So, that, so basically, maybe your employer at a medium-sized business has more power over you. But someone at a large-sized business has more power over that medium-sized business. So depending on the particular social arrangement you're looking at, who the victim is and who is the oppressor may look very different. One person's oppressor may be, may be oppressed by someone else. Um, so when you start looking at it that way, you, get, you start coming to this conclusion where you start having to intervene in every social interaction um, that's nonsensical. Um, instead of at least trying to limit these imbalances to the scope of one, what one is able to attain. And no, not everyone attains things in the fairest of ways. Okay, some, <clears throat> but sometimes what people think is unfair is not necessarily unfair either in the sense that, okay, inheritance or whatnot. Um, you know, there are unfair things like rent seeking, which is again generally using the state to bend business arrangements to your will or bending institutions to your will. But that comes down to what libertarians want to limit sort of these imbalances too. But the idea is to get violence out of the equation because once you introduce violence, then people's power is not just limited to their property and their body. It's now can be expanded to the property and bodies of others. I mean, this is what we see when people use governments to fight their wars and whatnot. That's really what libertarian is getting at to fundamentally. Okay. And anyone who, who tries to paint uh, this whole authority an angle from a broader angle, yes, when you paint it in that broader angle, you can come to the different conclusions, but then you're not getting at the fundamental critique of sort of mainline free market American libertarianism. And I, I do note that because there are different strains and different types of ideologies that the word libertarian has been associated with around the world, across history. So right now I'm really kind of talking about sort of libertar American Libertarian Party libertarianism, okay? Property rights, 
free market, free individuals, free movement of people, capital, goods and services, libertarianism. Because the idea is that when you free people, not just free individuals, but you free goods, you free services, you free capital, you free everything, then there's always the possibility, the hope of an alternative. If, if one institution is too oppressive, or one individual is too oppressive, if people at least have a nominal choice, they can always take what choice is always possible to sit there. If a good choice isn't available now, at least you are free to create new choices. Or someone may create something that will provide you with a new choice. That possibility is always there when people are free, okay? And, and everything can move. Because then you can move somewhere where there may be more opportunities. You might be able to invest somewhere that will provide you with more wealth or create something more valuable to society. You can always choose to, to educate and train and, and, and shift the career that you're into if you're free or, or f again find that better opportunity in another place or you know that you you're free to create those alternatives if there are those alternatives don't exist problem is we're always looking at it in that moment so in this moment my choice may be i have to work this job or my kids starve but that doesn't mean that's going to be my choice tomorrow okay in a libertarian world i can start taking actions that'll eventually give me other choices. Okay, I can go hop on a, uh, something like a Udemy or a Skillshare or YouTube, which is free, and find all sorts of free courses. Um, and if you don't have an internet connection at home, you know, um, you can go to your local Starbucks that offers you free Wi-Fi. And if you don't have a device for Wi-Fi, you can get like an, you have things like Amazon Kindles, which are now like 50, 40, 30 bucks. So you can find a device where you can watch your videos on the free internet at the cafe. So even if libraries didn't exist, you would still have pretty relatively easy or possible access to pretty much all the information on anything you'd ever learn in today's world. And the reason is because people were able to innovate, okay? <clears throat> now we can argue that some of these technologies were developed by governments at the time, but, the, but it was oftentimes the market system, the competition, the innovation of markets that took these technologies and created new technologies that took them to levels that really benefit society beyond sort of military use, okay? Because oftentimes when government comes up with something, it's usually for the purpose of blowing other people up. And then when you give it to normal people, we're like, well, we're not your average daily person, your average consumer isn't looking to blow stuff up, but to buy stuff, uh, learn stuff, you know, actual peaceful, you know, life benefiting, societal benefiting things, not blowing people up. Um, so this is at the heart of the criticism that libertarians are laying out. Not that authority is bad and not that authority should be dismantled, but that the interplay of govern of institutions of governance within society should be done with as little to no violence as possible. My name is Alex Merced from AlexMerced.com. Have a great day and enjoy. Thank you for listening to the Alex Merced cast. Learn more at alexmerced.com, libertarian101.com, and libertarianwingmedia.com. Follow Alex Merced on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.